In this video, we're going to take a look at the Arbitrum scaling solution and why it's such a big deal for Ethereum. Because, you know, one of the biggest complaints about the Ethereum network right now is that it's too slow, it's too expensive for most people to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, that's where Arbitrum comes into play. It's a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum that tries to make this problem a lot better. So I'm going to break all that down in this video today, explain what it is and how it works, and also look at how it stacks up against some of its competitors because the competition's heating up in this space to scale the Ethereum network and Arbitrum's got a pretty fierce offering. I'm going to talk about all that today as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to have become blockchain master step-by-step -step from start to finish, then head on over to dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so what is Arbitrum and why is it such a big deal? So Arbitrum is what's called a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum. So like I said at the top of this video, one of the biggest complaints about Ethereum is it's too slow, it's too expensive for other people to use. And a lot of people think that we have to wait for the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade to fully roll out before this can get better. But that's not true. We can actually make those problems a lot better with layer two scaling solutions right now. And that's exactly what Arbitrum does. It's an optimistic rollups based layer two scaling solution. I'll explain what that means here in a minute. But let's look at this really simple diagram on my screen here. So basically, uh, layer one is the Ethereum protocol that you know and use today. So if you do a transaction on top of the Ethereum network, you're transacting on Ethereum layer one, let's say you want to send a token around uh, with your MetaMask account like this, right? You'd be doing that on Ethereum layer one. And, you know, say you're trading on Uniswap, same type of situation. But if you wanted to reduce the fees on that one solution is to do a lot of those computations on a second layer. So this layer two up here, this basically is a new environment where you can perform some transactions. And then the result of those transactions can get actually included on the main Ethereum chain in a batch. That's what optimistic rollups are. It basically takes a lot of different transactions, rolls them up, and then settles them on the final layer one chain. So there are multiple competitors in the space actually working on you know different layer two scaling solutions specifically for optimistic rollups. There's also zero knowledge based rollups. I'll talk about some of those here in a second. And we'll also look at some other competitors. But Arbitrum is one of the leaders in this space actually working on this optimistic rollups based solution for scaling scaling Ethereum and has a ton of promise because a lot of different applications are already starting to launch on top of it. And it was actually the first layer two scaling solution to hit the main net. So it has a ton of momentum. It's hard to see a lot of strong community support, which is ultimately what you need in order for a layer two scaling solution like this to take off and it has a ton of strong development behind it. And so let's actually look at some other benefits of Arbitrum and how it qualifies as a layer two scaling solution, because sometimes there's some confusion about what actually constitutes as a layer two scaling solution on top of Ethereum, you know, what's a side chain. But Arbitrum is a true layer two because it actually sits on top of the Ethereum network and it actually interacts with it that way. So let's just look at the actual Arbitrum documentation here. So trustless security is actually rooted in Ethereum with any party able to ensure correct layer two results like I was just talking about. And here's the other big deals. It's really compatible with Ethereum. So any application that's written for Ethereum today for the Ethereum virtual machine can run on top of Arbitrum with no changes. So that's different from other scaling solutions out there where essentially the app has to be modified or even recreated in order to run on top of the scaling solution. But this is a big deal because there's no friction for developers to take their applications and put it on Arbitrum. So scalability, it moves the contracts computation and storage off of the Ethereum main chain, relying for much higher throughput. That's exactly what I was talking about, basically put on the second layer. Uh, it helps the scalability there and minimizing costs, so basically making transactions cheaper. So, you know, like I was talking about, you know, maybe you want to go trade a token on Uniswap and that costs you maybe $100 to get in and out of a trade. Well, you might be able to do an Arbitrum for like less than a dollar. It's basically a hundred times reduction in fees. And that's a huge game changer compared to the big bottleneck that we've seen on the Ethereum network today. So the fact that Arbitrum is going to make transactions cheaper, faster on top of the Ethereum network, and projects can basically move over to it with nearly zero friction, those are some huge selling points. But another really great thing about Arbitrum is all the momentum it has going for it in terms of the projects that it's already starting to support. So we just got news recently that Reddit rolls out the Arbitrum scaling solution for their Ethereum-based community point system. So I talked about this on one of my live streams that we do on this channel. You can just turn on notifications and subscribe. You'll find out about the 
other goes whenever we go live Monday through Friday on the channel. But Reddit essentially is, has launched a community points token that can be issued on top of the platform. And, and the community is already coalesced around Arbitrum as the de facto scaling solution for this. I mean, this is huge. Reddit is a social media giant. The community points are a huge deal. And the fact that they've chosen Arbitrum is major. We've also seen longstanding support from Chainlink, the Oracle solution for decentralized finance or DeFi, also supporting Arbitrum. And this is actually a longstanding partnership. And we saw a strong push from the Uniswap community to actually launch a Uniswap, the most popular decentralized exchange on top of Ethereum onto the Arbitrum scaling solution as well. Because initially, Uniswap was slated for launching Optimism, which is a different scaling solution. I'll talk about that here in a minute, which got delayed. And so the community was pushing for launching Arbitrum as well. And so this is just the beginning. You know, we're seeing a bunch of projects push to, to migrate or expand onto Ethereum layer twos. And Arbitrum has such a huge start. And now this is a really critical time because we're going to see a lot of competition between the layer twos like I was talking about. So the other really popular layer two from optimistic rollups is optimism we've already seen a launch of uniswap mainnet on top of optimism and so we're starting to see a, a war heat up for competition between these two things and the thing that you need to understand about layer twos is a lot of this competition is going to come from actually getting adoption and network effect so why is this important why is this really critical to understand well whenever you use a layer two you're constrained to the amount of activity and the apps that are on top of that layer two so even though you are deriving security from base one you know layer ethereum here let's just say an app like uniswap is deployed on top of Ethereum. Well, if you want to use an app like Uniswap on top of a layer two, it actually has to be deployed on top of layer two. And then you're confined only to the, you know, the state uh, of that particular layer two. So let's say if you want to go trade a certain token on Uniswap layer two, then unless Uniswap's on layer two, and also that tokens on layer two, and then also people have provided liquidity to Uniswap on that layer two, you may not be able to use it. And so for this reason, uh, layer twos are going to derive a lot of value from network effect, just like Ethereum layer one. One of the reasons that Ethereum is so valuable today is because of that network effect. Basically, the more applications that are on top of Ethereum that give value to the end user, the more those applications interact with one another, the more value that has. And the same is true for layer twos. The more applications that are on top of them, the more users, the more liquidity, the more funds, the more value that layer two has. And so we're seeing this huge competition between competing layer twos to attract applications, users, and liquidity to give value to those end users and be competitive and gain your dominant market share. And so let's talk about how Arbitrum is different from other scaling solutions out there. So again, it is an optimistic rollups scaling solution. Uh, I'll talk in a second how it's actually different from optimism. But let's look at other types of scaling solutions like, you know, zero knowledge scaling solutions or side chains, right? So we'll start with side chains. So basically, the side chain is like the Matic scaling solution. Of course, I don't think they like being called a side chain, but I'm just going to use that terminology here to make a point. So basically, a side chain is actually a separate blockchain with a different cryptocurrency. So if you're going to use like the Matic blockchain, for example, you actually have to hold the Matic token uh, and bridge your assets over that and, you know, pay for transactions in the Matic uh, token. So for an uh, optimistic rollup solution, a true layer two uh, for, for Arbitrum, then basically you're going to pay for transactions in Ether. But in order to use it, you still have to bridge, you know, your funds from Ethereum layer one up to Ethereum layer two in order to make that work. And so another big component about what's likely to, you know, influence the adoption of one layer two over the other is actually a centralized exchange support. Because at the end of the day, most users aren't going to like take their funds off of an exchange, bridge over to a layer two and go through all these steps. We need exchanges to actually support layer two deposits and withdrawals and which scaling solutions get support from these centralized exchanges is also likely to have a big factor on who gains a competitive edge in the long run. And so now we can actually look at some differences between Optimism and Arbitrum. Again, these are the two leading competitors in the optimistic roll-up space. They definitely have some similarities, but we'll get into the differences here. Now, some of these are kind of advanced, but I'll try to distill it down into some simple digestible explanations. So the first big difference is how they deal with fraud proofs. So this is basically when two parties disagree on the state after executing a transaction with a fraud proof mechanism. So basically, Optimism uses single round fraud proofs. Arbitrum features multi round fraud proofs. There's a lot of technical differences in these. I'll actually just put a link to the tweet thread down below if you want to read through them. There's definitely some pros and cons that are weighed 
But another big difference in the two projects um, is something for developers. So basically, Optimism requires a special Solidity compiler to generate the OVM bytecode. That's the optimistic virtual machine compared to the Ethereum virtual machine or the EVM and only particular versions of Solidity. But a benefit of Arbitrum is that it supports any version of Solidity and also any language that gets compiled down for the EVM. So if you like using Viper or something like that, then you can use it on Arbitrum. Another difference is Optimism actually uses the Weath token, but Arbitrum has native ETH support. And the last really cool thing about Arbitrum is they have a permissionless bridge to, to port any token over to uh Arbitrum. So basically, they have just a generic ERC-20 token, or even an ERC-20 can be taken from the Ethereum uh, network and, and moved over to Arbitrum. And so if you want to get your hands dirty and actually try Arbitrum and witness like how fast the transactions are and how cheap they are, then how can you do it? Well, you can go to bridge.arbitrum.io, and of course, you need a MetaMask wallet installed. You need some Ether in order to do this. And if you're going to try this out, then I highly recommend using the uh, Rinkaby test network so that you don't you know, risk any real funds when you're trying this for the first time. You can basically go to a faucet, get some fake Ether, all right, so you're not actually using any real money. And basically, you can uh, deposit funds. You can deposit ETH or ERC-20s, just like I was talking about a minute ago. They have the ERC-20 deposit. Click on the amount that you want to deposit and then bridge over to the Arbitrum ecosystem. And then after you've done this, you can use any of the apps that are running on top of Arbitrum. You can swap tokens. You can see how fast the transactions are and how cheap they are. And if you're a developer and you want to see how to actually get your hands dirty with Arbitrum as well, you can go to the developer.offchainlabs.com and find the developer quick start here. It'll give you a quick overview on how to set your app up for Arbitrum how to develop locally. It'll give you a pre-configured project that actually points to Arbitrum. You can just migrate your contracts like this. And I take advantage of that big benefit that I was talking about a minute ago, which is basically you don't have to rewrite your app in order to you know move it over to Arbitrum. You just basically have to take your app and point it to the Arbitrum ecosystem and then deploy your application there. That's a huge benefit that's going to you know basically make this ecosystem grow a lot faster. Because again, like I was saying, a lot of what makes a, a blockchain network valuable in the first place is the network effect. The more applications are on top of it, the more users are, the more valuable it becomes. And if you remove this friction point for developers to get started, basically all they have to do is take their existing apps and then port them over to Arbitrum with a few simple configurations. That's going to make that ecosystem flourish a lot more. And so if you want to get your hands dirty and help get started doing that today, then you can check out this documentation right here. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. You know, if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappyuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.